Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here back with another tutorial today. This is going to be a video on how to install Ubuntu 1904 in VirtualBox. So this is the latest version of Ubuntu at the date of recording this video. Um, and we're just going to be doing a quick little installation tutorial uh, in VirtualBox with this one. Now you can actually try the operating system without actually having to install it. Um, but we're going to kind of just show you how to install it in this video today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So there goes, there's going to be links in the description for VirtualBox as well as the download for Ubuntu. And then uh, that should be all that you need. And uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into VirtualBox here. And we're going to click the new button up here and we're going to type Ubuntu 1904 for the machine name, you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, in my version, 64-bit, you select 32-bit if need be, but leave it at 64-bit otherwise, and click Next. I'm gonna bump the uh, memory up to uh, two gigs, so um, you can leave it at the default of one if you would like, I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit. Then you can click Next, and then we're gonna create our virtual hard drive, so click Create, and then do VDI Next, Dynamically Allocated Next, and then uh, you can leave the default space of 10 gigs uh, or you can bump it up just a little bit if you'd like. I'm going to do 20 just for the purpose. And then we're going to click create. And now it's got the machine created here. And then what you're going to need to do now is go to settings by either right clicking and clicking settings or clicking settings up here. Go to the storage tab on the left side and then click this empty disk. And then you're going to go ahead and browse for your Ubuntu ISO. Now mine's in this list right here, but you will more than likely have to browse for it. So find where it is open it up and it should pop up up here and then you go ahead and click OK and then we're gonna go ahead and start the virtual machine and then the virtual machine is gonna pop up here and this is a little screen it comes up with for a little bit and then uh, it's gonna um, kinda do its thing here trying to load up a little bit and then uh, and then uh, there's going to come up, it's going to come up with some errors, but that's totally okay. Um, it does that normally, so um, you don't have to worry about that. And it's going to come up with the boot screen here. It's going to sit there for just a little bit. And then uh, we will be presented with a screen that will give us two options. So I'll uh, hit that back with you guys once we hit that screen. So eventually you will be popped up with this screen here that gives you the option to either try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. Now we're going to do the install Ubuntu option, but this is what I mean by you can just try this operating system and it's going to go directly, uh, boot it directly from the CD and it's not going to do anything to your computer. This is just going to load everything off the disk or the ISO, for example. Or if you were to actually make a bootable uh, USB flash drive, for example, it would just do everything off of that and it would not do anything to your main computer. So we're going to do the install option, so make sure you select your correct language and then do the install option. And then it's going to load a little bit here. And then uh, it's going to ask for your keyboard layout. We're just going to, uh, I'm going to leave it at, at the default for me. Select uh, as you need to for this. Click continue after that. And then it's going to ask uh, for if you want a normal installation or if you want the minimal installation. Um, we're just going to leave it at normal and then there's also the options of downloading updates and installing third-party software for graphics, hardware, Wi-Fi, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to diselect the download updates because that's going to uh, take a long time. It takes a long time to do it uh, during the installation. I was trying to do this before and it took forever to do. So um, I'm going to uncheck it. You can check it if you'd like. It's just going to take longer. Um, and then you can also do install third-party software, um, but you do not have to do that either. So um, we're going to continue now with the normal installation option. Um, you can give minimal a shot if you'd like. I mean, it's just not going to include like the office games, media players, that kind of stuff. It's just going to include the web browser and uh, the settings, utilities, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, and then we move on to the installation type screen. It's going to give you the option of install, uh, erase the disk and install Ubuntu. And then you can also encrypt it or use LVM. 
Um, the something else option is if you are wanting to make a partition yourself, if you don't want to use the entire drive, or if you're doing a dual boot, for example, you would click this option. Um, but in this case, this is the only operating system we're going to have installed and we're going to use all the space. There's nothing on it. So we're just going to do the erase disk and then click install now. And it's going to give you a confirmation of writing changes to the disk. So we'll just click continue to confirm. And it's going to ask for where uh, your time zone is. So just choose your specified time zone and then click continue. And it's going to ask for a username here. So it's going to ask for your name. I'm just going to type my channel name, for example. Not channel name, but just my name. Uh, and then it's going to pick a computer name for you. I'm just going to rename it to um, Ubuntu PC. Make it a Windows kind of name, you know. And then the username stays lowercase. You have to leave it the way it is, or you can change it. But it has to start with a lowercase letter. Otherwise, it will come with an error. Um, and you have to have a password. So... Um, you can make it whatever you want. You can. I'm pretty sure you can probably you can remove it later, but I could be wrong. Um, so you can do it so that it logs in automatically or requires your password. And then click continue after you're done with that. And now it should begin the installation process uh, for Ubuntu. So it's going to go through the process of copying the files and doing the installation process. Um, and this will take the longest time out of everything to uh, accomplish. So just let this sit here for a little while. It's going to do its thing of... Uh, the installation of Ubuntu and um, I will be back with you guys after letting this sit for a while uh, when we hit a restart point or when we hit the desktop. All right so after a little while it'll finally pop up here with the installation is complete screen and it says you need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. So we're gonna go ahead and click restart now to go ahead and reboot this uh, virtual machine and um, it did take a little bit longer than I expected, but it'd take way longer if you did the download updates. Like it would, it would still be sitting here doing uh, downloading and things like that if you were to select that. So um, if you do not want to wait long, then I would highly suggest skipping the updates for now, and you can do them later on if you're using it or something like that. So. Once again, disregard these errors that pop up. They uh, popped up earlier. Um, and it should, there we go, it says to remove the installation medium. Uh, or no, it's asking you to remove it, and which it already did it automatically. And then press enter. So uh, go ahead, and, and if it doesn't do it, it doesn't do it. Sometimes it takes a bit to recognize that. So it'll reboot the machine. And then uh, it's going to try and read that drive to try and boot off of it. And of course, those error messages will pop back up. So just do not... Uh, worry about those those uh, I'm not sure what those are about why those pop up all the time and then the Ubuntu logo will uh, pop back up here for you so um, just let this sit here for a little bit it's just trying to boot up for the first time so it may take a little bit longer than it uh, normally does and then uh, we will get to the desktop and there might be some screens here that uh, uh, that you'll need to do in order to get it all uh, set up and ready to go for you or it could be good right away don't quite remember for sure so we'll see uh, what happens here um, when this all boots up now here we go we're at the uh, logon screen here so uh, you go to click your account here and go ahead and enter in that password whatever you put in there and then uh, sign in and it should in theory get you to the desktop and you can see what the interface of uh, Ubuntu 1904 looks like um, now obviously it uh, has changed over the years compared to the earlier versions I remember starting to use Ubuntu a long time ago and uh, it definitely did uh, there's definitely made some improvements in Ubuntu and this just looks a lot cleaner um, it just looks good here so uh, on that screen you can skip the account setup and then uh, just click you can click send or don't send and then next and then it's gonna ask for location services I'm just gonna leave it off and then it says you're ready to go and this is all of the software types of things that you can install um, so they have actually some apps on here that are familiar with Windows users or Mac users like VLC discord Spotify Skype um, and then uh, there's Opera for a web browser, 
um, an OBS even. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, Linux, and this is a free operating system and people could use, um, people could use Linux on this and it's going to, you know, you can go into the software and look, uh, at what you can download. There's a lot of things in here that you could do. So, um, but yeah, uh, I think guest editions, I'm not sure if it works or not with it. I could, uh, give it a shot real quick and see, uh, if you try to insert the guest editions image, um, it should, yeah, there we go. It's trying to run it and, uh, it should, uh, pop. And if you click run, I think it should try and go. I never know if Ubuntu works or not. Um, I may ask for authentication. So you'll enter that in and it's going to try and, yep. See, there is a guest editions for Linux. So this, uh, you can install this if you'd like, which will install some graphics drivers and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, you can just, you can, uh, you can definitely do guest editions if you'd like. This is totally optional. Um, I just figured I'd test it just to see if it would work for you guys anyway, so that way you wouldn't have to worry about if it works or not. Um, but guest editions should work since it looks like it's installing it. it looks like it's kind of doing it in a terminal. It's doing it in a terminal window too. There's no GUI for the Linux version of this. So it's kind of just going to go through of uh, the process of installing guest editions and then it should come up with a uh, reboot screen at the end. So then of course here it will say something about that the uh, modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. And you can see that the screen even is auto adjusted already. So um, and it's going to ask you to press return to close the window, which is the enter key. So if you click enter, it's going to close the, uh, the window there. Uh, there's no prompt that asks for you to restart, but you can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and do the restart. And we'll uh, make sure that all the BS editions is working. Uh, you can see that the resolution definitely works for itself there. So, um, yeah, and that's all there is to it, basically. Um, but while this is starting up again, um, that's that's the installation. That's how to install uh, Ubuntu 1904 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys for watching this video tutorial. Uh, if you thought it helped you uh, or if you would like to see some more uh, tutorials of Linux, uh, be sure to drop a like down below. Um, and if you have any other ideas, like I said, I'm taking them into consideration, uh, drop a comment down below, uh, or if you have any questions for me. And also if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you would like to see any more, uh, virtual box videos, uh, VMware videos, anything like that. Um, and be sure to hit that post notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a brand new video. So. That is it for this video, guys. I appreciate uh, all the support, and uh, thank you for watching this video tutorial. Uh, the, it's kind of loading up here, so it's okay. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching the tutorial, guys, and I will see you all in the next video.